we can actually now enter time against a work order. Uh, so we have a, a couple settings here, Sean, within the field service settings. So one thing we can do is we can either manually generate our, our time entries, or we can have the system generate those from those booking timestamps. So as folks, if they are familiar with it, every time we change that booking from scheduled to traveling, in progress, break, so on and so forth, it'll it'll log that timestamp back into uh, the system once we, we sync. And then what's nice is, uh, so we don't necessarily have to generate those those bookings if we don't want to manually. But then what we can also do is see, you know, when do the actuals hit? Um, do we want to do it when the work order is closed posted or do we want a manager to approve that time entry? So we have a couple different options here as well. And this this really provides the 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 company in 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 particular flexibility in how they manage that process. Um, quite often we've had customers where they want to wait to that close posted to make sure that all the work that's been done is to their you know contractual requirements, what have you, and and they don't want to uh, approve any time until that's done. Whereas you also have companies where they're they're doing time and materials. Um, they want to be able to approve that time as it's coming in and um, manage it, manage it uh, first in, first out. Um, also, with that auto generate from booking timestamps, that does not preclude you from entering manual time entries. It just gives you the additional uh, the additional capability of generating them automatically from the booking timestamps. So again, flexibility in both of those settings for the customer. Yeah, and and we all know that the the technicians sometimes don't auto auto you know update their their booking so then it'll still update it'll still create those book those timestamp or time entry um but they could always go back in and say oh you know I, I only said i was traveling for a minute and it took 30 minutes so let me go ahead and update that appropriately because right. some companies right depending on what's contractually uh involved in in the work order certain amount of travel times covered, some of it's not. This allows sort of that little flexibility here to to also go ahead and update it, but at least they don't have to physically create it if they don't want to. Exactly. So let's, let's go ahead. At, let's take a look at a time entry itself. Yeah, so let, we, let's go ahead and take one here, Sean, from a, um, so you can hear, see some, hear some time entries just in that sort of the normal list view. But I can also, if I, you know, go ahead and enable that for the, you know, time entries here. So let's go ahead and just, we'll take a look at this one. So this is one that I created here. You can see here's my work order. Uh, I could go ahead and very similarly, right? I have the, that nice grid. If anyone's used to uh, project service automation time entry, I start seeing the breakdown here. Uh, I can go ahead if I wanted to and submit that for review if that was part of the process where I have to go ahead and submit it for entry. Um, I could also go ahead and, and click edit and go ahead and edit some of these details. And you can see right now that's still being worked out because it's this project. But uh, so we'll avoid that. But again, that's all configurable as well, right? So that's, I think, some of the things that uh, that we can, we can work on as well here. Now, the interesting part is the, the actual booking. Right, so I have a booking here, Sean, and it says here I'm scheduled, mm -hmm. and I have a very large travel duration. <clears throat> so we're we're going <laughs> we're going to <laughs> you know we're going to pretend right that that's not so much the case. So I can go ahead and click travel, and it, you know it'll go ahead and and save that. And what'll happen is as I go through that process, and maybe I say now I'm in progress. Um, and I go ahead and save that. It's it's keeping track of the of the the booking timestamps, but it's not writing the time entries just yet. Not until I complete my booking, right? So what'll happen is now if I go ahead and click complete my booking, now I'll probably have to here say, uh, let's just say I change my end time to uh, a little bit later, just to have a little bit more. So I'll go ahead and and save that. Now what'll happen is once I save that, 
Now it's completed. I can eventually go into my time entries. And then here, here, here they are, right? So here are those two time entries and they're not very long because it's going off the timestamp, but it says, here's my travel one. So I can go ahead and click on that. Here's the travel. And, and again, I could update it. You know, maybe it took me 30 minutes or 23 minutes, whatever it may be. So I, I can update that and it'll update the start and end time. Uh, some other details, I can provide the description. And then I could go back and, and I could do the same thing maybe with the work time. Maybe the, the work one took, uh, you know, three hours. Oops, that's right, because the other one I did 23, 23 hours. hours. 23 yeah. hours. So don't do that, folks. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't do that. It's not 23 hours. We'll, we'll say it's zero hours, 30 minutes. Yeah, so that that just just that just demonstrates how easily edible the time entries are. The time entries, um, yeah. And yeah. But, but what's the nice now is, it, and again, it'll it'll sync back. Eventually, it'll that'll sync back to here. But in the meantime, if I come to that work order, which was, uh, I think it's four fifty five. It's four fifty five here, and now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to post it. Well, those time entries will then also be processed as as approved. So if I wanted to, I can go to that list and eventually these would would go ahead and update. There's 455 right there. Yeah. They just so they'll in. go. Yep. So they'll go ahead and, and now that that's happened and based on my settings, these would go ahead and they'll eventually be you know, approved and, and well, I should say not approved, but they'll go and hit the actuals of that work order. Right. 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 So you still might have to, you still will probably have to submit your time because a lot of our customers will have this where it, it integrates to a, a time reporting system. But now I can go in here and I can, if I really wanted to, I could go ahead and, and see those actuals for that work order, you know, cost material, things like that. It'll eventually hit here. Uh, once those processes run, right. Once the, once the time entries are actually approved, yep. So so again, uh, uh, the under the covers, um, the system is using the same entity as what uh, Project Service Automation does for time entry. Um, you you may have seen a number of folks like like Scott, myself, and, and Auntie um, use that time entry. Uh, entity against work orders in the past. Now we don't have to make that that configuration change. It just is done natively, and with the enhancements of the uh, the booking um, the booking chain the uh, uh, the booking timestamp changes um, really enables a lot of functionality within the the timesheet and the time entries to enable um, those field service technicians to enter their time easily because that is a pain point for a lot of companies getting the um, service technicians to enter the act not only enter their time but enter it accurately so uh, a lot of cool things coming with the new time entry capabilities in dynamics 365 for field service yep and as always if you're playing around with this and you see something that uh, would be of use you know please enter that as an idea uh, so that can can get in there so if you see something that's missing or you know we all see things like time off requests that we would like a little bit better and again maybe this might eventually replace time off request and you can just put in your little you know absence and vacation here so mm -hmm. there's a lot uh there's a lot coming forward that that looks like it's it's going to be a a nice change and make things a lot uh, easier because now we're taking advantage of those same uh, entities and and structures that for example psa had for time entry uh, so it makes things a heck of a lot easier especially for folks out there that may have created some custom time entry for field service in the past absolutely well that about covers it for time entries in the new uh, april 2020 release for field service and uh thanks for watching the video